FM. NAR India annual convention recently held at Hotel Renaissance Mumbai was the epicenter of the Indian realty industry. An evening started with vibrant cultural program, witnessed dynamic networking, presentations, expositions, panel discussions and brainstorming sessions for realtors, developers and other disciplines from India and abroad. This year of convention was based on cooperation rather competition that a community thrives. Stalwarts of real estate industry addressed the audience in the inaugural session and celebrated the 10th anniversary of the NAR India. Friends, when I look back and when we started planning for this convention, you all know through which our industry is going. We started early in October, November, and then demonetization came, and then RERA, and then GST. It was a challenging time for us to put up such a huge event. Friends, the theme, theme convey, the collaborate. I think we have been meeting each other. This is the ninth convention. I know many people like me who have attended all eight conventions. And the collaboration, this is the perfect platform for NIR India members to collaborate. Because we have been doing networking. We know each other. We know the core competence of each other. We have trust amongst each other. And I think this convention promises this convention promises to create more collaboration. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, up next, we would like to invite uh, Mr. Ravi Verma. Friends, because this is our 10th year, I'll just walk you through very quickly through the highlights of the last 10 years. 2007, seven associations are we in Pune were one of them, started this experiment. We thought it was an experiment. We didn't know how long and how far we will go, but we've come a long way. Today, we are 46 city associations across the country. <laughs> we have partnerships with all our major collaborators and stakeholders in the industry. We have a bilateral agreement with Credai. The agreement essentially says that Credai and its members will recognize all of us in every city, and we in turn will sell the products of, of Credai members. And we will also collaborate and be part of, and we will invite them to our conferences, symposia, conventions, and likewise, they will do the same. Friends, as we went along, we realized that the pillars on which we are going to stand as an association is going to be education and technology. So we have now Indian Institute of Real Estate Education. We have that as a nodal body of NAR, so all the modules of education would be developed and formulated at IIRE and will be rolled out to our members on a regular basis as the years go by. We have our own portal. In 10 years, we have also bought an office at NCR so that we can better liaise with the government. I must close with saying that whatever I have seen so far of this convention has been outstanding thanks to one man, that is Vinod Thakkar. Thank you and enjoy your rest of your convention. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, um, Sam Chopra. We are now 46 associations, 30,000 agents and brokers which means direct and indirect uh, members are 30,000. Um, there are green shoots in the industry. I know a lot of people say there's you know, some problems because of various things that have happened, uh, RERA, demonetization, et cetera. I believe there's short-term gains, uh, uh, short-term pains for long-term gains, and I think we should take that in our stride. We're soon to be even more recognized, rewarded, and respected as a profession. And uh, with that, I will end my 
little note. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for bearing with me. Over to the next. Thank you so much, Mr. Chopra. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Farooq Mahmood, Chairman and Managing Director of Silver Line Group. As the Vice Chairman of the National Association of Realtors, this is a memorable day for me, as it is 10 years since we founded this association with seven colleagues. I must mention here that the invaluable support we receive from the International Real Property Foundation that helped us form this body. We started with three chapters, Bangalore, Chennai, and Pune. Two of our founding members did not even have associations. They were formed after we launched NAR India. As the founding president, however, I was certain the realtor fraternity in India would make this association a pan-India movement. Today, we are 46 associations with close to 35,000 members. It is certainly a pleasure to say today that NAR India is a significant trade body that has contributed significantly to make property broking a professional, transparent trade in India. With these few words, I wish us all the best. In the years ahead, I hope to be here in the years ahead to watch us grow and prosper. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, Farooq. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker needs no introduction. With a round of applause, please welcome Dr. Niranjan Hiranandane. Friends, let me tell you, do you believe in the Prime Minister? Yes. Okay, I do too. The Prime Minister wants housing for all by 2022. And if he has to succeed, he will have to grow the business of real estate in the private sector by 50% compounded per year, year on year, to achieve 30% of his target. So your business will grow. There is a guarantee which I am giving it to you. But the problem is not that. The problem is slightly different. The problem is we have had four tsunamis this year. We had the demonetization. We had RERA. We had the GST. We had the insolvency law. And everything has created a problem to achieve that end. In the last two and a half, three years, the business was down and everybody's business was down. We did as much commercial business in two and a half years, which we did in 14 years before. I want to tell you that problems will come and problems will go and we will have difficulties which we will have to do. But you and I, because we work together as partners and we shall collaborate and continue to collaborate, we shall win. Thank you. Manisha Natarajan of CNBC TV 18 moderated a panel discussion on the topic Changing Dynamics of Real Estate Industry, Impact Post Demonetization, RERA and GST with notable panelists. I want to know from you what really happened. I mean, 99% of the money came back to the banks. Did it really hit real estate in a way that we had thought it would? Basically, Manisha, I think we need to understand that this consolidation or moving of, the, of this sector moving towards industry started the day RERA was announced. Demonetization just happened to happen that time. So again, I think this giving too much stress to demonetization in my view is wrong and in fact it has played out. In fact, after three months of demonetization and we having more than 300 projects proved it to the industry and the world that the developers who have changed, who have, em who have embraced corporate governance, who have changed the way of working, who are executing, are actually selling. So let me give you some numbers. So those developers post demonetization, the first month itself sold 70% of the normal six months average, which included the highest in three years of October. Then obviously in December it went down because of the season. As you know, now in India, unlike the good old days when 
the holiday season used to be the a sale a sale season for the nowadays indians go out of the country and it was january february when actually the markets came back for these developers and let me again caveat this so please let's not talk about the industry as a whole anuj i'm going to come to you for the next answer there are two areas which people were worried about and after after this question i think i'm going to leave the monetization alone because we got to look forward and not behind one was land prices whether they would correct and the second is secondary sales i think manisha two things uh, you've hi- absolutely rightly pointed out uh, one was that it did impact the secondary sale uh, i agree what uh, mr jijina said is that the primary did not actually got impacted but secondary got impacted on two accounts one was the momentum came down and the second one was the prices that got corrected i would say between 5 to 15% the prices got corrected came down and have actually stayed there they haven't gone back again on the secondary on the land the biggest opportunity that i see this group going finding is not because of demonetization is because of rera i can tell you there is going to be a huge amount of consolidation that is going to take place not only within our fraternity not only within the real estate brokerage but also on the development and that's where the land prices have started to correct because a lot of my friends who been in the development business are saying is we're going to be land owners we are no more going to be developers because of rera and that's where i feel you're going to start to see a lot of land supply coming into the market these will be approved lands where you will be able to offer them to institutional developers like we have on this panel who are going to be able to take it as a joint venture joint development development management and that's where you're going to start to see realistic land pricing all right uh bamani rani my question to you is if land gets cheaper there is expectations which home buyers have and they've been asking us this question time and again why would prices not come down further yes manisha land prices should go down then what should go down is uh, the cost that uh, the government recovers from us time and again in in various uh, duties and premiums that that are paid by developers cost of funding should go down uh, because if the cost of funding goes down then the time that we take to build a project and pay out uh, you know construction related expenses etc would be uh, let's say subsidized a bit if all of this comes together in a perfect world we will have prices coming down i don't see that happening immediately the only thing that i have uh, that i see possibly happening is everybody is going to move towards efficiency that is even a consumer is going to look at what they're getting in terms of value not in terms of price i think this price correction bit has always been an anomaly amongst uh, indians the day they come to buy the flat they want the lowest possible price the very next day they want the highest possible price right they want their project to have appreciated overnight at least 100% all this all this will change people it's about changing perception my appeal to each and every one of you is that we've got to help catalyze the change in this perception we've got to start moving people towards value not towards price all right and that i've always been curious about that part mr hiran adani i'm going to come to you on that that you know uh, if you're going to get land much cheaper why would you not be able to bring down prices is it because your adjacent project is already at a certain price and therefore you cannot make existing buyers unhappy real estate is after all their biggest asset in their portfolio first of all price is not a component of cost alone it's also a position of what the market is mm-hmm. so if the market is bad prices will fall any which way if the surpluses of market forces are there in terms of uh, production is more than consumption prices will any way fall when you're linking it quest cost of land there are two problems the first problem is the marginal cost of land may fall but you already have cost of land with you plus construction cost which is taking place the same reason why banks are not reducing interest rates fast enough because they have so much npa in their pockets they have so much other issues that they are not able to drop the interest rates fast enough as fast as the other rates are done so two issues really that with land rates long term you're going to get affordable housing which is the objective that we all have i mean irrespective on which side you are you want the affordable housing to be created so that will happen 
but the magic of falling prices in existing stock only will take place if surpluses are created with adequate measure not the way it is happening today all right uh, mr ravi verma i'm going to come to you now uh, what do you feel i mean post rera implementation do you sense there is some return of confidence amongst buyers or do you think that these are very early days rera itself has teething problems it's a complicated law spread over multiple states in india and therefore it's too early to see the impact of rera first of all let me tell you that uh, rera has been very very unfair to Uh, the broking community or the realtor community mm. because our uh, penalties are the same as the developers penalties whereas they are paying 5% of their profit or the price which which where profit is a component uh, we are at the most getting 2% on a deal and to penalize us 5% is extremely unfair mm. to be, it is against the law of natural justice and then you scale it up to 10% then you, you are really taking a guy to the cleaners gentlemen thank you so much night nar india convention organized an exhibition where builders and realtors got the opportunity to interact and collaborate with each other the convention also discussed the global perspective towards the indian real estate market with international realtors what kind dubai he comes from dubai and uh, talking about dubai there's a boom or a bust and what does dubai see in india and vice versa over to you uh so uh good evening everybody and thank you uh for taking us on the panel uh the business uh for dubai from an indian perspective has been growing exponentially uh, 2011 uh, indian market invested roughly 6000 crores into dubai and it has swelled up to 38000 crores for 2016 so it grows exponentially so definitely our interest in the indian market continues to grow uh, the profile of indian investors is changing pretty fast uh, the age profile of investors in india uh, is comes between 40 and 45 uh indians are well traveled now dubai is one of the most favored destinations by indian investors so that what brings us to thank you uh, rag on to our next panelist is raj rajpal what he sees the inward and outward transactions happening in the us raj is from the us and uh, raj i like your inputs on this please thank you varagoy i think uh, indians have a passion for united states and it seems like as the economy and the market is changing in india uh us is starting to getting that same passion and love for india as well and a uh, couple of years ago i think it was more outbound where indians from india were buying in us now it's gone both directions we're seeing consistent movement of real estate purchases in both directions so if you look at the numbers last year if you looked at all the foreigners that bought real estate in us was about 104 billion india out of that was 9 billion dollars that's almost 8 and a half 9% of all international real estate purchases in united states was by indians from india but that is one side of the story if you look at the other side of the story where uh, if you talk to developers in india some developers tell me as much as 20 30% of their sales are coming from abroad i was sitting with a developer last week 19% of his all sales and this is a high end product with 5 million and up came from united states in one city new york alone thank you raj jeff i'd like you to give us an oversight of an overview of how singapore looks at india as a global investment destination and vice versa i think singapore started their yeah, foreign direct investment into india as early as the year 2000 by the year 2006 fdi from singapore to india has reached 2.6 billion and up to the year 2014 it has gone up to 19.4 billion so singapore continue to encourage investment into india in fact our government agencies are also 
encouraging small and medium enterprises. Thank you, Jeff. Kirkor is going to give you a perspective of how he sees India, and he's going to talk a little about the European economy and how things are in Europe right now. The real estate investment in Europe in 2016 have changed compared to the previous year of 2015, especially in the leader countries as the UK, 66 billion compared to 91 billion in 2015, Germany, 54 billion compared to 64 billion in 2015, while in France they remain the same, 28 billion. And despite this decrease in the leader countries, some neighbor countries registered increase, like Austria, Poland, Hungary. Moreover, these countries remained more attractive compared to 2014. Thank you.